Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Alyssa Reynolds and welcome to another video in the mini-series that I have been doing for the past couple weeks on channeling spirit and the many different practices that I recommend you bring into your continued practice with communicating with spirit. So for the past couple Saturdays I've talked about building belief, I've talked about path working, and I've talked about active listening and intentional creativity, or as I called it in the last video, spiritual creativity. Today what I'm talking about is one of the most important practices when it comes to connecting with spirit, and that is grounding. Which many of you have probably heard about being grounded um, and the importance of grounding is right in the name. <laughs> it allows you to be really physically present in the moment so that you can better tune into whatever energy you are connecting with. And in general, it is a really valuable practice for just centering yourself. So those of you who have a really, really busy mind, where you find it hard to fall asleep because your brain just does not stop chattering, or you get anxious really easily, or you get overwhelmed, or you are on the far end of the empath spectrum where you're extremely sensitive. Grounding is so, so, so important because it pulls all those threads that are just going whew, all around you and brings them literally centered into you. It pulls them all in very much like a tree and its lovely straight trunk. And speaking of trees, it is out in nature and particularly with trees that you want to go to word in order to ground. So the actual practice of grounding is either walking on the earth with bare feet, or if you're wearing shoes, you are just imagining your energy uh, traveling down through you, through your feet and into the ground. But the best practice is going and putting your back up against a tree. Now, I know for some of you, your mind may immediately go to, ooh, but I don't want to look like that weird person who's like sitting back against a tree or hugging a tree or whatever. <laughs> then if you're feeling a little bit awkward about that, bring a book along, bring your phone along and lean up against the tree, putting your back nice up against it and look at your phone or read a book or whatever it is. Or go into a space where you don't run across a lot of people. Over time, when you get used to it, you're going to start not paying attention to people. I'm always out in the park that's just kind of in the little cul-de-sac area where I live and putting my back up, a, up against the wonderful, wonderful, huge old tree there. <laughs> and I'm sure my neighbors are just like, yeah, whatever, it's Alyssa again. Well, they don't all know my names, but they recognize me. <laughs> anyway. That's all it is. Just putting your back up against a tree for at least five minutes and doing this at least once a day, if not multiple times a day, and particularly doing it before you are channeling or at any point when you do feel that like overwhelm of just thoughts in your head or the anxiety bubbling up go and ground. Now, if you live in a location where 
it's really, really hard to find a new trees to go and put your back up against. There are many different crystals that you can use to ground yourself. And one of them is rose quartz. It is a wonderful, wonderful crystal for grounding. It's probably the best one, I would say, um, at least in my personal opinion and personal experience for grounding. Although we're all very, very different and you may find that a different crystal may ground you better than rose quartz or it could change because some days I find using a piece of petrified wood or grabbing just a rock of one of the many rocks that I've collected down at the beach and using those when I'm grounding and just putting them in my lap or holding on to them that um, works just as well so it also really depends on just in the moment what resonates with you but rose quartz is definitely the best just full stop for grounding if you're not able to really easily get out to a tree but even for those of you who live in big cities there are parks just go to a park make it part of your daily exercise to go out to a park put your back against a tree and ground Not to mention that in addition to just helping to center yourself and slow those thoughts and make it easier to connect with spirit, because hey, that's why we always recommend meditating before connecting with spirit, because spirit vibrates at a totally different frequency to us. And so in order for us to hear, feel, sense the frequency, we have got to be still. We have got to let our frequency just center. And that's where grounding helps. That's where meditation helps. Um, that is also grounding a great way to help with the ascension symptoms that anybody who is starting to get curious about spirituality in general, who is starting to connect with spirit, who's starting to notice number sequences or feathers or just is having that curiosity or is putting into practice many of these different things that I've been talking about, you're going to be feeling ascension symptoms. Now, I'm not going to go into those in this video because like chakras and like uh, Claire's, it's very easy to go find information on the internet about ascension symptoms. But grounding also really helps with that. So those times when you're finding yourself getting this constant headache or ringing in your ears or a sore throat that is not attached to a physical illness, that's probably an ascension symptom. And going and putting your back against a tree and grounding by doing that will help relieve their symptoms. If not, in some ways, even totally get rid of them. Usually though, it's just going to relieve them a little bit, make them a lot less, make you be able to go back to whatever you were doing. <laughs> and on top of grounding, trees are just wonderful, wonderful, wonderful beings to connect with. They're some of my favorite beings to talk to because every single tree is very, very different. And there's many trees out there that are not used to chatting with us. So they're really fascinating because some of them get really, really excited and you can feel that excitement bubbling up out of them and just bubbling up through you. <laughs> and some of them are so humorous and yet wise, like the wonderful big old tree in the little park just out front of where I live. Um, or they have this really slow, entish way of talking. Ents are the walking, talking tree beings that come from Lord of the Rings. <laughs> and they're wonderful too. So every tree has such a unique energy, such a unique personality, and they all have wonderful things to say. So that's just half the fun too, is as you're out walking, just putting your back up against 
any tree that you come across and just connecting with them and getting to know them and having a fun adventure with just feeling all these different energies of these different trees because each one is as unique as each of us. <laughs> so really in this video that's what this is all about. Just go out, put into practice five minutes of grounding every single day while you are walking off to work or you are out exercising. Go put your back against a tree. Do it just for five minutes. Do it at any point whenever you start feeling like you're getting pulled in a lot of different directions. Do it before you practice connecting with spirit. And I would love to hear what some of your experiences are um, with the kinds of trees that you are connecting with and the energies that you get from them or just your own adventures and where you're going to connect with the trees and to ground. So with that, I wish all of you a whole new adventure to add into all the practices that I've been giving you for this week. Start grounding if you have not already. And if you are grounding, listen to the trees that you're connecting with. So taking into account the active listening that I was talking about last week, tune into what the tree feels like. So applying a particular emotion to what the tree feels like, or maybe you're just getting colors, or maybe you get images, or maybe you get sounds, because sometimes I get trees that aren't really used to connecting with us, and they've never really connected with a human before, and I just get a whole bunch of giggling and laughter, because they're just so excited. <laughs> And sometimes they're really, really sleepy, like the really, really big old Entish like tree that's a couple streets down that's absolutely enormous. And he kind of gives off a masculine feel, so call him a he. And <laughs> he's very slow and very sleepy and kind of has the kind of like sounds and doesn't ever verbalize every anything so I don't get words from that particular tree so much as I get emotions and just like this very slow spark of joy that I'm connecting with him. <laughs> Speaking of connecting with trees. As I've been talking, that tree that I was talking about that's just out front, literally just a couple paces away, honestly. <laughs> if I look out my window and look around a little bit, I can see the tree that I often go and ground against and I talk to quite a bit because I'm always walking past him. He's just popped in and his energy, like I mentioned, is quite joyful, a um, little bit witty, very wise, and he says, hello, fellow children of Gaia. I am so excited for those of you who are just beginning to connect with all of us. And for those of you who are connecting with us, I am so excited that you are curious about conversing with us. For we have so much to say. We have seen so much. And we cannot wait to share with you all that we have seen. And know that it is not just what we see, just in our area. So I do not tell this dear one just about who I see 
past me, or who I have seen past me, for this space where I am was once a great orchard. And even before that, it was once untamed and untouched by your creative minds. I do not speak just of this. All of us, us trees, he means, do not just speak of what we have seen in our years. But we hear from others, so other trees. We speak with each other. And so, I can tell you <laughs> all the gossip. He's got this little mischievous kind of feel <laughs> when he's saying that too. That is going on all across this island for that is where I am. But where you are and the trees that you speak with, they will have gossip for your area and much further and further across the whole land that you reside upon. For we are all connected, just as you are all connected and we, and he means us embodied as humans and the trees and all the beings that are here upon Gaia's back, our Gaia's children. I encourage each of you to make it a game speaking with us think about being a child again and going and getting to know every single tree in your neighborhood and beyond. <laughs> so when I was younger, um, Pokemon was quite a huge, huge popular thing. <laughs> so he just said, you may treat speaking with each of us like you are collecting each of our names <laughs> and write about us and keep track of us in your books. <laughs> so he's talking about journaling about each of the trees that um, you may go out and meet. <laughs> oh, just bringing to mind just the images of like Pokemon cards to me which quite funny, so, <laughs> at least to me. <laughs> we are very happy to work with each and every one of you, if you so wish, offering you any guidance to whatever questions you may have. So, come and speak with us. Wake us up, for there are some of my brothers and sisters who have not connected with any of you and who are still asleep. And as the light grows stronger and stronger and stronger, those of us who are still asleep are waking up but you, connecting with us, can help. Share your energy with us. Talk with us. Even if you cannot hear us. Even if we are still asleep. Talk with us. And we will begin to wake up. And you too will hear us.
That is all. <laughs> now go out, he says. Go out, go out, go out. And now, just for those of you curious about how energy feels, I've just felt his energy, which kind of came rushing up from the ground, up through my toes and just through me. It's now pulled back down through. And I can feel his energy pulling back toward his physical tree form. <laughs> That's out. Sorry, I've got a window that way that I'm pointing toward. <laughs> Awesome. So, there you have it. You have a challenge, not only from me, but from my wonderful neighborhood tree. So, go at it, have fun, explore your trees, ground and center yourself, and it will not only help on your practicing journey to connecting with spirit, but it will also help in general, just making life so much more magical and fun. <laughs> and hey, that, in my opinion, is what we're here for. Yes, we're here to learn so many things, but we're here for the experience and just to enjoy it and be. So, go be, have lots of fun, and practice all these things. And I'd love to hear about your experiences down in the comments below, as always. So until next week, love and light to you all, and goodbye for now.